Welcome to the Bible Forum. I'm Warren Sprouse. It's Sunday night, 8 o'clock p.m. Another Sunday, another Bible Forum. I want to welcome you to the Bible Forum. Bible Forum is a ministry of alternatives, biblical counseling, and education. It's a 501c3 nonprofit corporation. Your donations are gladly accepted and will assure the continuation of this ministry. All you need to do is go to our website, thebibleforum.net, and click the Donate button. You can watch the Bible Forum live right from that website. Uh, you probably were able to see it here just until about a minute ago. Someone in the chat room told me I'd forgotten to uh, delete all those that were running this week. Each week we put up the segment so that you can see them. Uh, there is a way to uh, bypass that and go right to all the rest that are available uh, from that same website. If you'd like to get an email, uh, let me know. So sign up, send me an email, and we'll put you on. I'll only send one out on Saturdays, late in the day as it turns out, recently. Uh, and this uh, past week, I sent you a picture of my new car. No, 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 no. That is a product of old age and busyness. Uh, uh, that is the, the car, that's the picture that I put in that slot every Saturday. And then I change it out and put me in there. And I forgot to do that. And somebody was very faithful about reminding me tonight, and I appreciate that. We've got a lot of news this week, a lot of things that are going on. Uh, I want to talk to you about the, the news that has dominated our world this week. Uh, the commander of Iran's elite Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps said last Monday that destroying Israel was now an achievable goal. After 40 years, Iran's Islamic Revolution, he said, we have managed to obtain the capacity to destroy the imposter Zionist regime. Major General Hossein Salami was quoted on the IRGC's SIPA news site. The remarks were made at a biannual meeting in Tehran for commanders of the IRGC. Uh, in the midst of rising tensions between Iran and the United States, along with its allies. They say, quote, Iran has encircled Israel from all sides. Nothing will be left of Israel. If Israel makes a strategic mistake, it will have to collect bits and pieces of Tel Aviv from the lower depths of the Mediterranean Sea. Sounds like they're scared. According to the Frontier Alliance International Studios Sheep Among Wolves, Volume 2 documentary, uh, Inside Iran, it talks about a country where the majority of the citizens are Muslim. The fastest growing church in the world is there blossoming underground. One unidentified Iranian church leader even went so far as to say that, quote, Islam is dead in Iran. The church leader, who obviously remained anonymous for their own protection, asked, quote, what if I told you Islam is dead? What if I told you the mosques are empty inside Iran? What if I told you no one follows in Islam inside Iran? Would you believe me? He went on to say this is exactly what's happening. God is moving powerfully inside the nation of Iran. The church leader also shared that he believes the Ayatollah Khomeini is, quote, the best evangelist for Jesus, end of quote. The leader of the movement said the Ayatollahs brought the true face of Islam to light and people discovered it was a lie. After 40 years under Islamic law, a utopia, according to them, uh, they've had the worst devastation in the 5,000-year history of Iran. According to Fox News, the church is without buildings, property, or central leadership, but still 
is steadily growing. The movement's aim is not to plant churches, but to grow disciples. There's a clever twist, isn't there? It's the Bible idea. Quote, the seismic shift happened in the Church of Iran when all these church planters found out that converts run away from persecution. But disciples would die for the Lord in persecution. Disciples forsake the world and cling to Jesus till he comes. Converts don't do that. Disciples aren't engaged in a culture war. Converts are. Disciples cherish, obey, and share the Word of God. Converts do not. Disciples choose Jesus over anything and everything. Converts, not so much. Converts run when the fire comes. Disciples don't. This Iranian church leader tells us. The underground movement, which is pro-Israel and is largely led by women, is being dubbed by film director Dalton Thomas the, quote, Iranian Awakening. One believer said in the video that they understand the danger of participating in the Iranian Awakening, but it's a risk they feel they must take. They say, we know that if they get us, the first thing they will do to us as women is rape us. And then they will beat us. And ultimately, they will kill us. This is the decision we have made that we want to offer our bodies as sacrifices. Because I have thought this when I wake up, that when I leave that door, I might not come back. That's the kind of commitment we saw in the first three centuries of Christianity. Before the Roman church or the Roman uh, empire took control. The uh, Jerusalem News Service, October 4th of this year, is telling us that after 13 years control of some 300 planes flying above the Middle East late last month, came from Shaw Air Force Base in South Carolina and not the Combined Air and Space Operations Center in Qatar. Major General B. Chance Saltzman told the Washington Post, while the shift was temporary, it's a significant tactical move amid the Iranian threat most recently including the Iranian strikes last month on two Saudi Aramco oil facilities. The functions that the CAOC provides for air cover are so critical and so essential that we can't afford to have a single point of failure. Our goal is deterrence, he added. So the planes are flying from South Carolina, or at least the controls are there. Interesting. The website weather.com, dated September 30, 2019, is telling us that global warming is on hold. According to them, the jet stream took a sharp southward plunge from western Canada into the northwest last month. This sent temperatures crashing well below average for this time of year. An upper-level low moved very slowly across the Pacific Northwest, which wrung out Pacific moisture into the cold air. And the result? September snowstorms blasted parts of the northern Rockies with heavy, wet snow and high winds, leading to power outages and tree damage, accompanied by record cold temperatures for the end of September and early October global warming. The Byline Los Angeles, the Los Angeles Times, is telling us that facing a deepening quagmire over homeless encampments, Los Angeles elected officials are increasingly looking towards sweeping statewide initiatives to shake loose solutions. 
The latest proposal from Los Angeles County Supervisor Mark Ridley, Ridley Thomas, and City Councilman Joe Buschiano would have the governor declare a state of emergency on homelessness in California. Supporters view such a declaration as a novel strategy that will free up state and federal funding, typically reserved for natural disasters, things like earthquakes and wildfires. It would suspend or streamline the regulatory hurdles that often slow down shelter and housing development. It also could block NIMBY opponents, the not in my backyard people, from using environmental reviews to sue, delay, or block homeless facilities from opening. Why the rush all of a sudden? Why this brainstorm of ideas? Why all of a sudden are these elected officials starting to look to both state and federal governments to help with this problem? Could it be the light that was shown on them by our president, who took a lot of heat, by the way. It's amazing, isn't it? Donald Trump and the Republican National Committee had $156 million in cash at the end of September. Now, that's a sizable amount coming hard off recent events surrounding Democrats' handling of the Ukrainian issue. Of the $125 million raised just in the last quarter, $15 million after Pelosi announced an impeachment inquiry came from new donors, private donors. 50,000 new donors put money in the pot in a 72-hour period. He now has a war chest that allows them to spend aggressively in the early days of the campaign, gaining an advantage over the eventual Democrat nominee even before the primary contest is over. We saw one this week. And he is already tapping into that war chest. The RNC launched a $2 million television and digital advertising campaign just over last weekend meant to respond to the impeachment inquiry of Trump that Democrats launched last week. In the same time period, Bernie Sanders raised $25 million and Mr. Buttigieg $19 million, according to their campaigns. Senator Kamala Harris, who has watched her poll numbers drop off in the third quarter, announced she raised $11.6 million in that third quarter, a slight drop from the 11.8 she raised the previous quarter. Senator Cory Booker, who has languished in the low single digits of polls, reported raising more than six million between July and September. They were the first of the 19 candidates seeking the Democrat nomination to challenge Trump in November 2020 election to report their fundraising totals for the quarter, which ended Monday night last Monday night. Tucson, Arizona, Associated Press are talking about a very unique case of child abuse. What do you think? Federal authorities say a Tucson man is facing a first-degree murder charge after his six-year-old son died during an attempted exorcism. Pablo Martinez told investigators he poured hot water down the child's throat on September 26 and held him underwater for up to 10 minutes in the family's home in Pasco Yaqui Reservation. The 31-year-old Martinez says his son had been acting demonic. Now, the logical question here is, what does that mean? And while giving the boy a bath, Martinez said he saw something evil inside his son and knew he had to cast it out. Martinez held the child under the faucet, claiming the hot water was casting the demon out. 
The boy was taken to the hospital. He was pronounced dead, with burns over 50% of his 15% of his body. It's unclear if Martinez has a lawyer. Keep in mind, both the Roman Catholic Church, which is dominant in Mexico, Central and South America, as well as here in the United States, and the charismatic movement, lean heavily on demonism to answer the questions of disease, illness, and antisocial behavior. Think Benny Hinn and a host of other men and women who have gotten stinky rich by so-called casting out demons. They eventually arrived at a demon for everything you can think of. And they had their techniques for getting those demons to leave. To leave. Benny Hinn's famous fire on you, you know, on the hand on the head, fire on you, I cast you out in the name of Jesus. There's a Bible illustration of some men who tried that as well in the days of the apostles and of Jesus. And the demons came out of the man and beat those guys half to death. Nothing in the Bible tells Christians to cast out demons. Nothing in the Bible gives us a formula. When you see somebody casting out demons, you're looking at witchcraft, not Christianity. And a little boy dies because of the father's religious ignorance. An employment tribunal in the United Kingdom has ruled the biblical doctrine that people are created male and female is incompatible with human dignity. And those who follow it can be fired from their jobs on that basis. The panel in their ruling decided that the Bible is mere opinion. This decision came as a result of one doctor's challenge to his dismissal for failing to use female pronouns for a man. You do know in Great Britain that the medical profession and all that is governed by the, by the government. It's socialism. Here's a man who said he believes the truth of Genesis chapter 1, verse 27, which says that God created human beings, both male and female, created he them. The panel, however, knows better. They ruled that both belief in Genesis 1.27 and the lack of belief in transgenderism and conscientious objection to transgenderism is, in their judgment, incompatible with human dignity and in conflict with the fundamental rights of others, specifically here, talking about transgender individuals. The defendant, represented by the Christian Legal Center, lost his position with the Department for Work and Pensions after refusing to use transgender pronouns. The Christian Legal Center said the judgment will have serious ramifications for Christian professionals and indeed all medical professions, professionals because the judgment dictates the language that professionals must use in the workplace. They pointed out that the judgment is also contrary to scientific reality and is likely to undermine freedom of speech in the workplace. Michael Phillips, the Christian Legal Center's counsel for Macareth, said the doctor was discriminated against because of his faith. Now, my opinion is he was discriminated against because of his beliefs, not just his faith. He believes his religious beliefs, his medical beliefs, and his social beliefs. And because of that, he's out of step with the new truth. The reality here is this patient was examined by a doctor. The patient was found to have male qualities and appendages, and depending on age, a beard or at least stubble, and perhaps a male-type voice. Without a court judge in the room, 
What was he supposed to call this person? Well, today, if I dress up like a woman, I'm a woman, right? That used to be a definition for insanity. Today, it's corporate insanity at the highest level or a wildly irrational social development, which if adopted by the entire world's population, would ultimately eliminate human beings from the planet. You say, no, it wouldn't. Why? Well, because the men, or is it the women, claiming to be men, can still have babies. And increasingly, this kind of logic is taking over the world. We stopped hospitalizing less than dangerous mental patients in the 1980s. We didn't do that because these people no longer needed help. We did that for economical reasons. We couldn't afford to keep them all. The psychiatrists were labeling these people as ill and putting them into hospitals and into homes at a rapid rate. Today, the psychiatrists have more than doubled the mental disorders they had back then, and they continue to find more every year. So it's either to treat these transgenders for the mental illness they express or embrace them as an alternative normal. And we've chosen the latter, which begs a question. Who's got the mental disease?